Hi everyone, I'm Dragon with you. So today I wanted to share the first week at Gold results and talk about TT Twister. So we already fought with all other guilds, but I never had the chance to create a video about TT Twister, so let's do it today. As you can see, this guild managed to hold the best of all who were opposed to us and the reason for that is they have both great heroes and titans. So only anti-covid could do something alike, like, but we managed to capture more hero locations and as a result you see that these two guilds are super strong. Also if I show you the map, so let me show you what exactly happened. So that's the map of the fight which happened that Monday, I would say, so the previous Monday. And uh, that's all what we could do. So we captured the bridge, we tried to get foundry but failed because one of the champions was too strong. And we also couldn't finish the lighthouse, unfortunately. And you see that we didn't do much against this guild. At the same time, they, they just didn't lose anything. So the only reason they finished second is that actually some of their players didn't participate, I guess. So let me show you the fights and let me show you the heroes of this fight, right? So we, we go straight to the log. And here is what happened. So my initial plan was to get bridge anyway, we need access to other locations. If we get stuck at front locations, then we just can do nothing about that otherwise. So let's check their bridge. Only Manuela and Claudio could do serious damage to the bridge, that's why I started from them. You see that the opponent plays an absolute first titan, which is pretty solid. Same about Adam. So probably they know me as a water player, that's why they were prepared. And in fact, yes, really, I usually started fighting against the bridge. But fortunately, Manuela helps our team and she also has a nice water totem. So, although water versus earth is not an optimal decision usually, but anyway, if you have a good totem, then you can do something, right? At the same time, I also saw at Max test that water can actually beat earth at manual control, obviously. So, anyway, that's what Manuela and Claudio managed to do with this huge titans. That's the start of the fight. Just for information, I'll show you some examples. So, for example, East Wind and Killjoy, the two fights of four. The scenario is pretty same, but the results are slightly different because of damage which was captured and the damage which the opponent could deal. Here we see that it's an Earth plus Water. So, obviously, East Wind tried to counter Fire. Potentially, Fire should attack here. And as a result, he plays Hyperion. Also, Hyperion helps to heal this team. And the, what we see here is a good try to remove the front line. And you see that it failed. So, East Wind managed to heal back, managed to stand and stop Claudio. So, zero losses here. What about Adam? So, Adam played same team. The scenario was almost the same. I'll just show you at X4, I guess. But the result was slightly different. So the result was different because of power difference. I know that it's not huge, but anyway, because of adding digging ability, this digging decides what happens really often. And you see that actually one totem was opposed to another. So Araji tried to, to fight with the totem, but the damage was bounced back. And actually that helped to survive. Anyway, also nine points. What about Killjoy and Ronald? So Killjoy and Ronald played another team, they played Ronald played Fire and Killjoy played Triple Super Titan team. So personally I don't like Triple Super Titans because they have some troubles with totem activation probably at late game, but anyway they can fight against every element. What about Ronald? So Ronald played a team with Araji. So you see, depending on what happens here, you are able to get different results. 
So for example, here we see that Araji tries to fight water, that's hard, but we have other attackers for water. And Manuela did a nice job trying to get for water plus Araji. That's a good thing. Anyway, we needed to fix that somehow. So after that, we went straight to the bridge. So that was my two attacks. I managed to remove Eastwind, but I failed against Adam. And uh, first of all, let me show you real quick just uh, the option which we made to kill the bridge. Then I'll show you several fights more. And uh, actually the opponent just cleared us all. So that's not a big deal. Just as they expected, so I attacked water with two fire titans because I buffed all the tanks. As a result, I have kind of more titans than usual, right? And the idea was pretty simple. So my frontline tank is able to absorb damage because the damage isn't really effective against fire. At the same time, only Hyperion can deal significant damage to my frontline tank. But unfortunately, only four stars artifact. That's why he's not super tough. Anyway, you see that he is able to stun, which is pretty important. And when the opponent is stunned, I can deal a huge amount of damage straight forward. Then we have damage reduction, also Nova's ability. So this hybrid team, I tried to test this team and it kind of worked, I would say, because I stunned enemy frontline tank. As a result, I didn't die too fast. But anyway, it late game when everything is maxed. Probably you would play for water plus RG like it is done by Manuel. What about second fight? The second fight was not finished. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish. You see that these titans are charged, so I got some damage since the game started. Also, I had a problem with the totem. So the totem is huge. Once again, you see this great stun, which results into minus one now. Then we have the second tank almost dead. And my role was to remove totem at least, because we have finishers in our guild, so someone can finish it later. My role is to remove the totem and to deal a nice amount of damage. Unfortunately, this totem is too huge for me, but I kind of did my job. What about Juan? So Juan is the character who fights Earth against water, Earth against Earth. His team allows to do that, so he kind of has all the tr three super tanks. But his job was just to finish, so just double finish of Adam, right? And Ronald. And the last at the bridge was Killjoy, so Killjoy, I sent Panther there to fight. And uh, it looked kind of logical, but that wasn't enough, because I guess the opponent was charged. Yes, you see that we have two charged titans here. As a result, it was harder to remove them. And you see that Hyperion dealt a huge amount of damage. So Killjoy managed to remove fire, playing Hyperion. Anyway, we finished him later with Devon, so that was our next attack, and finally we captured that bridge. What about others? So what happened at Lighthouse? Let's move back. So Dirty Dozen attacks two characters. That was Navin and Ivanos Knights. At Navin, we managed to fight against Kira, Chinmao, Isaac team. With Nebula, I really like this team because it has double armor penetration plus armor penetration from Fenris. So Navin plays a nice Kira team, I would say. Also, Nebula can remove debuffs, can heal, so can buff, right? So this team is not as easy as it might seem at first glance. Let's show you the fight. Even though we have only one healer here, but the amount of damage is kind of huge. So he can play Isaac against mages, he can play Kira as a damage dealer, and also if opponent plays Chin Yasmin, then she probably jumps to Chin Mao or Esteros. So this team kind of helps each other, and as a result, you see that Navin managed to survive. Next fight was with Vanos Knights. Ivanos Knights provided a Kira Corvus team with healers and Vari, so he also tried to protect from kind of most of potential damaging units. So what about Corvus? Corvus versus Maya is kind of effective, same about Celeste, not sure about Arachne, but the problem is that Dirty Dozen's Maya is really huge. So I tested this Maya on my Cornelius, that's why he tried to make her with better health to get more etc. 
And also Celeste helps Maya with the buffs. So that's the reason why she survived. You will see this fight that's kind of nice. What I wanted to show you is Maya survival versus the Altar of Souls. So the idea is pretty simple. You just need to go into the flower and survive longer. Sometimes it works. And every time the flower is destroyed, you get a lot of damage. So that's the first time you see that Maya got a huge amount of damage. Yes, that's right, she almost died, but the flower goes again. And as a result, Celeste is able to heal her. So one time the opponent managed to remove her. At the same time, you see that the amount of damage is just huge. That's why the altar is already gone. Maya managed to survive second time. And as a result, you see that this team was ruined. Yes, we couldn't fight Yasmin here because we have healers plus Corvus, that wouldn't be logical. But against this team, we managed to just burn once Maya. What about finishers? So at Lighthouse, I tried to finish Navin with Vladimir. Vladimir plays the team which I played in the recent past. Now I also play it at Adventures mostly, at Arena if I attack somebody. So that's the team with Yasmin Chinmao, just armor penetration plus quits and uh, double heal. So double heal, Celeste also can be used as extra damage, as anti-resurrection. At the same time, Isaac makes Celeste feel not as great. So let's see this fight too, real quick. I will show you this fight. So that's how we captured two locations, the bridge and the lighthouse. Actually, at other locations we had serious problems, so we couldn't finish them because huge heroes were there and uh, we didn't have people to do that. So what about Lighthouse? What happened there and why we failed to capture it? As premium elements we just came there and uh, started the Earth and finished the Earth with Simply Thomas. I'm not going to show you everything obviously, so I'll just let you the first fight where Panther tried to deal a nice amount of damage so that the second team finishes. So we have Fire versus Earth, everything seems logical. Araji got a nice amount of damage from the totem back and here we go. So that was good enough to finish la later. What about Lighthouse? So Don Yozo managed to just remove Highlander. Yes, I understand that the amount of power was just seriously different and this fight was like almost hopeless, I would say, but actually I needed to try. I needed to try to do something. You see that Isaac isn't here, so potentially we could deal some damage. So let's watch this fight, how it went. That's kind of boss fight now. Of course, the opponent has several units which is 1 million power, they are really powerful. Also, I really like that Don Yozo plays Iris, so Iris is a great hero, I still think so, especially against Aurora, she just drags the soul, and as a result, all the dodges, all the armor, all the magic defenses are gone. The soul is just burned. So Don Yozo just pretty fast removed Highlander. What happened to Eastwind? So Eastwind received some damage, that's a Kark pack, one of the typical Kark packs. And actually, let's just check this fight. Sorry for the background noise, the road is nearby, so we have some extra noises maybe. So here we go, you see that we managed to remove Kark once, but as a result only Nebula is here. And at the same time, we need to proceed, we need to try other locations. Okay, so what other locations I would like to highlight? So probably we tried to remove something at Foundry. You see that Aman's team was again with Iris. I really like people who try to play Iris. I think she's an effective character. But now I just need to improve their characters. That's why I play her right now. So let's see what happens here. Another Iris team. And you see that the damage which Demon managed to do straight into Iris was really helpful. So when he removed Iris, yes, he lost Yasmin, but that was still okay. But check out what happened now. So now only Orion is here and Aurora is healed back. So 
So this looked like a nice fight for Demon. But eventually we had to finish Aurora and that was for another player because he couldn't do that himself. He even destroyed all the units. At the same time Dragon made two nice attacks. One of them was successful, another one was kind of suicide. But anyway, that was nice and let's see how Dragon worked. So the idea was pretty same. I used Corvus team against Hira to burn her fast. Against Isaac it also can work, against Healers it's just a perfect counter for Healers. And against Asteros we have Morgan team. So let's see the fight, let's see how it ends. Attacks 4, because actually I don't have much time, people asked me to make a short overview. That's why I try to make everything pretty quick. But this team's logic is kind of same. So you play Kira, Isaac gives penetration, against Yasmin you have healer. So as a defensive team, Jeff kind of tried to counter some of our main ideas, like playing Yasmin or playing mages. Anyway, we had a third option, the undead team. So what about this fight? See, theory was pretty nice, so you can burn Yasmin, you can burn Chin Mao, you can burn Celeste. But on practice everything went pretty wrong, so I'll show you. Anyway, we managed to remove pressure later, but that was too easy, I would say. So let's see what happened here. One more time, you will see that jumping into healers ends for Yasmin with killing healers, and at the same time Yasmin just kills them all. That's it. So if your Helios isn't able to burn Yasmin, then she can kill them all. The second attempt was for Termit. He managed to finish here pretty fast. So what he did is pretty same. So he needed to burn Yasmin. She was already damaged, so the first life is gone pretty fast. Second life is not here because we don't have Asteros. And uh, at the same time, he just needed to finish this team. But everything isn't as simple because the opponent still has Chin Mao and Celeste as damage dealers. So he needed to fight with them. A perfect jump straight into Celeste. Because if he jumped into the Chin Mao, he could die with Yasmin and lose this fight. At the same time, anyway, he needed to fight Chin Mao. You see that it was not super easy, but he did it finally. Okay, so Max against Eastwind, I just wanted some damage to happen, but it didn't happen. Karg just life steal back everything. Cylind versus Saman is a finish in a foundry, nothing special. String of Elements. String of Elements, almost same fight. You see that our totem is better, so I will not show this fight, just a typical uh, elemental fight. Okay. So what should I show you? You see that this character defended several times in a row, that was powerful. Let me show you this hero of Titi Twister who managed to stop us. And probably that will be the end of our attack analysis. The idea was pretty similar, so you need to use Kark. Kark with uh, Faceless, Kark with Jorgen. And as a result, if you clone Kark with Faceless, then you just get another damage potential. Sorry for the background noise. Okay, so that's what happened here. And uh, anyway, we had to clean this out and we had to do something with it. So that's how the fight is going. You see that everything is not according to plan. We didn't manage to finish the opponent. The second attack failed. The third attack failed. And as a result, I just ignored this location. Then we went to spring of elements that wasn't really helpful. At the same time, Tatoro managed to remove the opponent with not as great totem, so it's a typical 
damage. Also, he did a nice damage to Crusher. So, just a better totem, just an elemental pipe. Also, Selene tried to finish this character and that didn't work. Sasuke Uchila managed to hold a huge amount of our attacks. And uh, after that, we just tried to do some more points at Foundry. And you see that that was not really successful. So that's how the fight went. At best in the fire, the situation was pretty similar, but here we have a slightly better totem. So even with a huge difference in power, we managed to collect a nice amount of points. Let's see. So that's how the fight went and Pierre managed to win. Okay, so Termit versus Eastwind at Foundry was not a good choice. Eastwind managed to just left steal back. You will see that although he has four health, but Kark is really solid and he is able to life steal, he is able to heal back. If your team is not able to fight with Kark, he tried my own strategy with Biscuit, but unfortunately that was not enough and he didn't remove Kark. As a result, Edit. Okay, so let me show you the map again, just to show you the complete image. That's it. So we managed to complete only bridge and spring of elements. Lighthouse and foundry were not captured. And finally, let me show you their attack. So that's the attack. You see that actually they just cleaned everything up. So pit had absolute fire totem. Then Sunny also had absolute water totem. So the totems just smashed us. Same about heroes. So I will not show you all the fights, but that was pretty fast and uh, not many problems around to clean us all. The reason why they didn't just uh, erase us was probably because several of their players didn't join the fight. I can't find any other ideas, because their players are really strong, they have absolute totems, so fire, water, earth, they have everything they need. Let me show you the fights with several of our top teams, which just tried to resist, but it was almost useless. So just several examples, for example, Dirty Dozen's team, which is pretty nice at defense, which is hero of my previous video, couldn't do much against this team, so he played mages plus isaac plus sebastian so with extra crit potential and with some healing he managed to clean everything pretty fast that's the stats for the heroes and you see this power is it's that's just huge right so don yozo has also great titans great heroes not a big problem for this team to remove us same happened to me so that's what happened exactly here Just a crit hero team. So double crit plus buff from Nebula and my team is dead in 22 seconds. Really quick, right? That's history. So, in general, I would like to say that TT Twister is a really solid team, which is much, pow much more powerful than us, with a lot of absolute totems and uh, heroes which are ascended, I guess, right? So they deserve the first or second place, and uh, I'm happy that I had an experience fighting with them. Hope you enjoyed it too. So thanks for watching, see you in my next videos, good luck to you.